SharePoint Podcast, Ausgabe 386 vom 23.01.2018. SharePoint Podcast. Das auditive Update für den engagierten SharePoint-Anwender. Themen, Trends, Tipps, Tricks, Talk. Am Mikrofon Michael Gret. Ja, zuverlässig wie fast jede Woche. Herzlich willkommen zur 386. Ausgabe des SharePoint Podcast. Heute mal wieder mit einem interessanten Gespräch, ähm, das ich aufgezeichnet habe auf dem SharePoint Saturday Bremen oder SharePoint Saturday North Germany, wie es offiziell hieß. Fand am letzten Samstag in, wen wundert Bremen statt, im Schuppen 1, einer sehr coolen Location im Hafen. Gelände gelegen, umgebaute Hafenanlage, äh, ausgebaut zu einer Oldtimer-Remise. Das heißt, wir haben dort in der Halle äh, unsere Vorträge zwischen alten Bullies und äh, Cadillacs und äh, weiß ich was, was da noch alles für alte Autos rumstand, gehalten. Ähm, sehr charmantes Ambiente, gut besucht, viele interessante Gespräche geführt, viele interessante Vorträge Darunter auch die Keynote meines heutigen Gesprächspartners und der ist ein langjähriger Freund dieses Podcasts, war auch schon öfter mal hier dabei, Mike Fitzmorris von Nintex, SharePoint Urgestein und äh, er hat die Keynote auf dem SharePoint Saturday gehalten unter dem Stichwort Citizen Developer. Ähm, dieses Thema fand ich sehr interessant, äh, geht es äh, so in Richtung... Äh, nicht im Prinzip in Richtung Power User, aber es ist eigentlich, beschreibt es keine Person dieses Citizen Development oder den Citizen Developer, sondern eher eine Grundhaltung, wie man heute auf Plattformen wie SharePoint Online oder Office 365 Lösungen baut, Anwendungen entwickelt und umsetzt. Das hat was mit Lagom zu tun. Ich werde auch gleich hören, worum es sich da dreht. Das hat was mit gelebter Imperfektion zu tun. Ähm, ja, und das war sein interessanter Vortrag. Ich äh, habe mir gedacht, Mensch, äh, da muss ich doch Mike mal gleich fragen, ob er nicht auch äh, dieses Thema nochmal hier im Podcast etwas intensiviert. Und na klar, das war kein Problem. Und insofern könnt ihr euch jetzt mal anhören, was es mit dem Citizen Development auf sich hat. Und äh, ja, viel, viel Spaß mit äh, dem Gespräch mit Mike Fitzmorris. Ah, <laughs> yes, uh, ich bin Michael Fitzmorris. Okay, oh, as we you know, Mike Fitzmorris. Yes, and call me Fitz. Fitz, yeah. Um, you have been guest here in the SharePoint podcast, I think, for four or five times uh, over yeah. the decades I'm doing this podcast. You have been kind enough to have me on your show uh, more than once. So. Yeah, and it, it's always very uh, interesting to have you here. We are on the... First SharePoint Saturday, North Germany yes. here in Bremen, and you It's did a good the keynote. Crowd. It's a good, enthusiastic crowd. And you did the keynote this morning. I did. Yeah. I did and indeed. your keynote was a little bit different uh, as uh, I think the former keynotes we have from you. You started a former, a little bit like Tedmore orientation, yeah. and your point you was discussing about was citizen development. Yes. Well, uh, what is this? Well, the, the idea is. Uh, I actually think a keynote should be different from a normal breakout session. So, and I like TED Talks because in this particular keynote, my goal was to promote an idea. Mm -hmm. And that is that citizen development is something that should be embraced and that SharePoint is perfect for it. Uh, be that SharePoint Online, SharePoint On-Premises, actually Office 365 mm -hmm. and the Microsoft stack is great for citizen development. And I didn't invent the term. It, um, the Gartner group invented mm -hmm. the term about 10 years ago. And it uh, relates to the old concept of citizen soldier where someone, it, their primary job wasn't to take up arms and defend the country, but they were able to do so if they were threatened. So mm -hmm. if you think about the Swiss army, yeah. uh, Swiss <laughs> yeah. civilian forces today or, uh, Uh, Napoleonic France. Yeah, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm not American, but I live in the United States, and you know, there, Texas, for example, half the people there are packing mm -hmm. firearms. Uh, but so they, they are ready to go 
if the situation calls for it. But here, here's the key, and this is how it relates to citizen development. Those people are ready to, it's not their primary job. They're ready to help. They're ready to, when necessary, do what has to be done, whether it's soldiering or uh, let's stop talking about soldiering and mm -hmm. talk about development. A citizen developer is somebody who doesn't develop all the time. In fact, if they're going to do a little bit of development, whether you want to call that low code, no code development or solution building or solution assembly or amateur development, what it really is, is something to help their real job. Mm. It's not their, their real job is not to develop software or solutions or, or customizations or so on. Their real job is to do something else. This is to pause, interrupt their, their real job, do something that will enhance it. Uh, you know, I, I know people that, uh, you know, will, will write, will spend, oh, a couple of hours writing a script to eliminate mm -hmm. a 10-minute task because that, that they could do manually in 10 minutes because they know they have to do that task tomorrow and it will take another 10 minutes and so on, which actually gets me to the point. Some citizen development is actually done by professional developers. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you're writing something and it's not your primary project, if this is just a utility program you built for yourself, you're doing citizen development on mm -hmm. your own behalf. The only violation of the rule I have is that professional developers doing citizen development, it might actually involve code. For the rest of us, when we do citizen development, we really should avoid code as much as possible because the goal of citizen development is to have it quickly built and easily modified, quickly testable. We test it in combat. We test it in the real world. Mm -hmm. If we want to change it, we change it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, this is really important. It just has to be useful. Or Lagom, la as you say, yes, Lagom. Please I, I, explain what Lagom means in this uh, context. Lagom is a Swedish word, and it literally translates to enough. But it means more than that. Uh, you know, your audience yeah. is primarily German, if I'm not mistaken, and German is known for having some fantastic single words that if I were to translate them into English, mm -hmm. um, I would need at least a sentence, if not in a paragraph, uh, to explain. So uh, I think... I think ausreichend or läuft. Yeah, uh, or schadenfreude yeah. or uh, backpfeifengesicht. <laughs> uh, yes, the, these are, some of these words are crazy and yeah. some of them are just simple and useful. Yeah. But the point is, the Swedes have a word mm -hmm. that means enough. But what it really means is, I have enough to feel completely content. Mm -hmm. I don't need more. You could give me more and I would get a little bit more incremental pleasure from it, but it's not necessary. It, it's enough to do the job right. It's enough to do the job yeah. right and enough to make me happy. Yeah. In other words, I'm not happy from excessive pleasure or needs being mm -hmm. met, but I'm happy from my needs truly being met and I don't need more. Mm -hmm. And the fun part is, the world today is, Budgets aren't being held by IT. Budgets are being held by lines of business. The marketing department or whoever right. has the money to do that. Marketing, sales, operations, they own the money at this point, And they could allocate that money to IT to have custom work done for them or go out to an independent contractor and have something built for them. But the options that they have today include... A software as a service application. They can ha they can have concur for tra uh, travel and expenses mm -hmm. or dynamic CRM or Office 365 today with a credit card. It takes 15 minutes and suddenly you have the option of being la mm -hmm. today instead of having to have a needs analysis and have a bunch of requirements and get sign-offs and go through a whole lot of... If you're willing to accept imperfection you can have enough more easily today than ever before and the nice thing about all those software as a service offerings is that they're meant to be connected together they all have apis and they're standard mm -hmm. apis sharepoint offers services using those apis office 365 office 
offers services, but they can also consume all of those mm. services. It's the perfect place to bring all that together. And what you should think of is a citizen development project as being a Lego project. Mm. You snap together Lego bricks in order to create something useful. It may not be perfect, but it'll be enough. It'll be Lago. And the fun thing is, when I was little, Lego bricks were all standardized. Yeah. But over the years, there are now custom Lego pieces that can be used for highly special, very interesting projects, uh, which means one of the things IT should be doing, and one of the things marketing could do, is spend money on getting custom Lego bricks built, hmm. or custom software components built, with an idea uh, of having it be reused over and over again by other people. It's this technique that can be used to have one department that owns an asset or owns a data source to provide Lego bricks or... or APIs of their own to allow everyone else to use their assets, but in the way that they find acceptable. Mm -hmm. So if I control the customer database, I can let someone in marketing add new leads, but that's all they can do. They can't change phone numbers. They can't go in and look at order histories. They can't do any of a number of things that I would need to train them carefully to do. I will give them a little Lego brick that they can add to their own application. And then suddenly they can log new opportunities. So the organization gets better and then I don't have to teach them everything. I just give them something that's very easy to use. And we suddenly have a solution that is Lego. I found it very interesting that you come back to this Lego metaphor because when I dig in my old presentation from maybe 10 years ago, yes, we also I used this Lego metaphor I know, I to remember. show how you can uh, use SharePoint as a building blocks. But I found it very interesting that you said now Lego has so much customized parts sure. for, for a very specific uh, use case, yes. but it still fits in the old 8x8 blocks or 8x2 blocks. Uh -huh. So it still fit in the same stuff. Right. And, and the other one you... Uh, dig up from the old times was the Swiss Army knife. Oh, so right. we have we have the tool set. Yes. When I let me say when when, when I remember what you t told, uh, said today, um, I think the SharePoint designer was the uh, citizen developer version 0 .0 0 0.0.alpha yeah, <laughs> and was, was 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 the the best thing for imperfect uh, work and for imperfect solutions what you can do. It But was. it's now I think when I understand you right, it's that now we have the tools, we have the platform that people like, we call them power users from earlier time. Now you call yes. them system development. But these persons, you, you will do something more with the platform. Uh, they have no uh, idea how to code, but they have the right tools. And now with the platform, the tools are there, the APIs are there, yes. and external offerings are there. So everything's come together and now it's time for citizen development. And two things about that. Uh, I don't call them power users. If you want to, that's fine. But I actually want, um, because I don't think it's a person, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an activity. So really good users might sometimes do mm -hmm. some development. Uh, yes, they, they are by definition power mm -hmm. users. But it's really, I, I want to focus on the activity because I actually think development, uh, simple development, solution assembly, Lego brick type work, that's becoming an essential business skill. Mm -hmm. A while back, being able to prepare a budget in Excel was a specialized thing and you needed help with it. No, mm -hmm. you're expected to be able to do it. Uh, setting up a conference call sending out a, a memorandum to everyone in your company mm -hmm. that required specialized skills not anymore everybody knows how to do it well everyone if you look at newer members of the workforce they know how to do a little bit of mm -hmm. solution assembly to either write a script or compose a page or do some basic automation And there are a number of pe uh, offerings from third parties, from Microsoft, from other ecosystems that are making it easy for someone that owns a problem yeah. to own the solution, as long as they don't insist on it being perfect. So in other words, mm -hmm. don't customize it too much. Yes, get your logo on it, change the colors to whatever you want, make a couple of adjustments, but just use it. Mm -hmm. Because if you're willing to just use it, 
you can put to get, snap together whatever you want and have it today. Mm -hmm. And today, for a small amount of money, is incredibly attractive. IT needs to get behind this so that they can coach people to, to use these tools well, that they can teach people some fundamental skills they might need that they don't have, and to, when they see one user doing something really great, be a cheerleader, promote uh, mm -hmm. and advertise what they've done so that other people can benefit from it. Um, if they do that, IT stays very relevant, even if a lot of the work is not being done by IT anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there will always be a core amount of work that IT has to do. No one loses their job in this, but more stuff gets done. I think that has something to do what I can call um, the Betriebssystemifikation, it's the operating systemif system systemification of the information worker platform. Sure. Let me explain. In Maybe in Windows 95, when you bought a, a printer or a mouse, you got a, a disk there with a driver, so you had to install the driver, and then it works. Yes. And today, if you buy a Windows 10 PC and a, uh, and a printer, you just plug it and it, it works. It, right. Nothing to care about. Yes. And when you look at Office 365, in earlier times, you have to install an Excel, a PowerPoint. Oh. Now we are in Office 365, and you want to use Excel? It's there. You want to use this? It's there. Everything is there. So it's it's a commodity. It's part of the operating and system. The and I think I will add to you, yeah. it's the operating system plus APIs yeah. because uh, the thing that happens now if you've got a mouse or the thing that happens now if you've got a printer is the, the printer and the mouse speak a particular <coughs> protocol that everyone understands. Yeah. If they want to add their own drivers for custom functionality, they can. But forget about that for a minute. If, if, I am, uh, if I have a mouse, it's going to uh, it's going to say I am a mouse mm -hmm. in a way that's well understood by Windows, by Mac OS, by Linux, by BSD, by just about everybody. Mm -hmm. It's like, hi, I'm a mouse, I do this. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll talk more if you want special functionality, but if you just want to move the pointer around and click two buttons, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody speaks an API. The mouse wants to be used by every operating system. Same thing with printers. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, the operating system, you're absolutely right. But when, and if, you, if what you need is Excel, Excel's already there. Mm -hmm. But if you need Excel to uh, perform a calculation and it can't do it by itself, you're gonna need to call an Azure function or you're gonna need to call a publicly available web service somewhere. And it's yeah. speaking a protocol we yeah. already understand. I don't need custom middleware. But even and at that time, when I look at Microsoft Streams, by the way, mm -hmm. so you upload a video, okay, yeah. that's it's a commodity, mm -hmm. but they have built in Azure functions like transcription yeah. or like picture yeah. recognition. Mm -hmm. So it, it's there. You don't have to program to do it. It's just oh, yeah. you, you upload it, click uh, on, on the button, say, yeah, I want that, I want that. And 10 yes. minutes later, everything is there. Mm -hmm. It's something, I think Microsoft called it Microsoft 365. Yes. It's, it's, in, it's in, the, in the branding. Mm -hmm. You see it in the branding, right? And if I come up, yes, that's correct. And if I and if I want to build a solution of my own, I can make use of those exact same Lego bricks. Yeah. So if I want transcription for my own custom service, I can use something from Microsoft. If I want to use cognitive services, if I want to use any of a number of things, yeah. sentiment analysis, not a problem. I can go ahead. And, there are cloud-based tools, building blocks, components that I can take advantage of so I don't need to do a custom job anymore. More and more solutions are going to look like things you assemble hmm. rather than the things you write from scratch. Very interesting. Can you recommend some sources where um, our listeners can get more information about the topic or is it just some ideas you are spreading here on, on such kind of... Uh, it's ideas I'm spreading around. I'm actually yeah. starting um, I'm starting a series mm -hmm. on stuff like this. It's published on the Nintex blog. Mm -hmm. So Nintex.com, look mm -hmm. at company blog and some of my stuff appears there. Uh, but no, I, I actually, I, I do presentations on this particular topic as much to spur conversations like the one we're having um, because some citizen developer efforts look like workflow others look like pure data management chores others are business intelligence mm -hmm. um, different problem spaces require different kinds of things but, no, but, but it, it requires a different kind of mindset that uh, you accept that maybe the imperfection that you accept Lagom 
and that accept that there are citizen developers, that the budget is not in the IT, and so that you have yeah. to accept that and build upon these That's things. That's correct. And not everyone agrees on what the definition of citizen developer yeah. is. I know that there are some people that think that custom JavaScript coding is a citizen development activity. I don't think that <laughs> belongs. Not so much that it's too technical, it's that it kind of violates the idea of being able to build it yeah. quickly, assemble it from other components, change it as quickly as possible, and so on. The more it looks like a formal development effort, those don't go away. We still mm -hmm. do those. But this is a way to get at the problems that formal developers will never have time for. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think, I think some of us in the industry are sort of in a, in a state of debate as to what citizen development is. I certainly have my mm -hmm. opinions. Mike, thank you very much for taking the time. It was always a great pleasure to talk to you, getting some great new ideas and share it with you. That's, thank you. The uh, feeling you. is mutual. I think you will be uh, in Germany maybe next time in May in Mainz. The, yes. in Mainz at the European Collaboration Summit. Yes, I will yeah. be at the European Collaboration Summit at the end of May in yeah. Mainz, just yeah. outside of Frankfurt. And you will talk about this topic again? Um, I'm... It's possible that I'll yeah. be talking about this topic. I'll certainly be talking about workflow. Yeah. Uh, and, but yes, I, I'll be there probably talking about any of a number of things. Yeah. But maybe we can continue our conversation. On oh, that yes. Already. Bank on that. Yeah. We, yeah. we will absolutely continue to have conversations on uh, citizen development. Ja, spannend, ne? Mal was drüber, ein bisschen zum Nachdenken. Ähm, interessant auch zu sehen, wie alte Dinge wieder hervorgekramt werden, so wie diese Lego-Symbolik, ähm, klasse, äh, aber mit frischen Impulsen versehen. Ähm, sehr spannende Entwicklung. Werdet ihr wahrscheinlich auch hier im Podcast und in meinen Online-Videos in Zukunft auch sehen, weil, äh, ja, das ist auch so ein... Thema oder ein Motiv, was ich aufgreifen werde. Okay, wir haben auch hier nochmal gehört über Veranstaltungen, European Collaboration Summit. Ähm, freut euch auf den nächsten Podcast, da kommt äh, wesentlich mehr dazu. Äh, ich habe auch äh, schon einige Interviewpartner sozusagen akquiriert. Äh, Zeichen auch mit Uli Boddenberg, da geht es um seine Erfahrungen aus den vielen Seminaren aus den Consulting-Seminaren, die er im letzten Jahr gesammelt hat. Da wollen wir uns mal angucken, was so die fünf Pain-Points waren, die im Seminar angesprochen wurden und was er vielleicht für Lösungen dafür vorzuschlagen hatte. Ich bin mit Markus Ratz verabredet. Das heißt, wir werden wieder ein Talking Insights machen. Das wird auch im Februar kommen. Und ich habe noch einiges anderes im Petto. Freut euch darauf, auch insbesondere auf die nächste Ausgabe. Ich bin auch dabei, gerade mal wieder ein paar Coupons zusammenzusammeln und ein paar Freikarten für Veranstaltungen. Also, alles äh, spätestens in der nächsten Woche. Das war's für heute. Und tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Ach nee, Moment, ihr könnt mir gern Feedback geben. SharePointPodcast.outlook.de ist ja die E-Mail-Adresse oder kommentiert einfach auf SharePointPodcast.de, wo ihr auch die Shownotes zu diesem Podcast findet. Und ansonsten sagt tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Der Michael Greg. Das war der SharePoint Podcast. Das auditive Update für die engagierten SharePoint-Anwender. Feedback und Kommentare bitte auf sharepointpodcast.de. Auf was? Ach, auf Wiedersehen, ja.